Hi, I'm Heather. Welcome to class. Today we're going to do a short practice of inversions and this is for experienced students. If you would like an understanding of how to approach these inverted postures, I have a number of tutorial videos on my channel and I'll put links to them in the description box below. Before we begin, if you find this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe. When we're starting an inversion practice, it's often helpful to begin with Ardha Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog Pose. So let's stretch forward in Ardha Mukha Virasana, establish the positioning of the hands, the work in the arms, straighten the elbows and activate the outer upper arms. Bring the head down and just spend a few moments tuning into your breath. And as we move into our practice, we're wanting to maintain a smooth, steady rhythm of breathing so that we can sustain the poses with a sense of ease. Let's transition to down face dog pose. Inhale, shoulders forward, keep the arms straight. Exhale, lift up your hips, legs straight and draw the buttocks up through the lift of the heels. So initially, as we come into our downward facing dog pose, lift the heels significantly so that you can lift the buttocks and thereby straighten your spine. Long straight spine, slowly descend the heels, but maintain the lift through the sitting bones. So as the heels descend, it's not so much about trying to get the heels to touch the floor. We're still wanting to maintain the straightening of the back. Sometimes we try to get the heels down and that compromises the straightening of the spine. So make lifting the sitting bones your priority so that it helps the lower back to stay long and straight. All the while we're pressing through the inner hands as much as the outer hands. Press the knuckles of the index fingers down and squeeze the elbow tips in so the arms are straight. Get steady in your breath. And then we'll come down, have a rest, bend the knees, come back down into Adho Mukha Virasana. However, this time, relax your arms. Rest your forehead down. Relax the shoulders, the upper arms, along with the legs and hips. Now, as we transition to Adho Mukha Vrukshasana, our handstand, let's make use of the wall so that we can sustain the posture. So yes, there are times when we can practice kicking up in the middle of the room. And uh, if you've got the capacity to hold there, we're gonna see if we can hold for 30 to 60 seconds. So we're working with timings in this sequence. I'm gonna use the wall. I'll place a mat down here so that I've got a sticky mat for my hands and then I'll kick the heels up to the wall. It can also be of benefit to use a belt around the elbows, just below the elbows, just above the elbows or on the elbows themselves to help the arms remain straight. So I'll be demonstrating with the belt and today I'm going to work with it just below the elbow crease around the broadest part of the forearm there. And I want to make sure the strap remains tight, or taut as I'm placing the hands on the floor. When you place the hands, give yourself about a finger's length away from the wall, pressurize the inner hands as, ma as much as the outer hands, and then lift the heels, lift the hips, bring your shoulders vertically top the wrists, and we'll kick up. Use your breath, inhale and exhale. Find the wall, heels to the wall, press the heels to the wall to then move the buttocks forward off the wall. Now you can look down at your hands, or you can let the head hang between your upper arms. Either way, drive the hands down to push away from the floor. Pressurize the knuckles of the index fingers down. So all the knuckles pressing down, the pads of the fingers pressing down to take excess weight out of the wrists. And go on squeezing the elbow tips in. Lift the lower front ribs up as you press the middle buttocks forward away from the wall. Tailbone up, squeeze the inner legs together, 
squeeze the inner ankles together and lengthen the inner feet up away from the groins. Peel the outer feet down towards the outer hips. And then let's slowly come down and we'll rest in Uttanasana. You can put the strap aside, take your feet apart, drape your arms down so that the wrists can rest. If the back of the hands don't come down onto the floor, you could try putting bricks underneath your hands so you get that sense of release in the wrists or you could bend the knees a little. Get steady here in your breath. Quieten your eyes. And then we'll transition. So let's bend the knees. Come down onto the floor. We're going to transition to Pincha Mayarasana, the tail of the peacock pose, commonly known as forearm balance. And again, we'll use our belt around the elbows and we'll also bring a brick in between the hands. You may be capable of free balancing in this pose, that's fine, but remember we're wanting to work with timings today, so we're gonna see can we hold it 30 to 60 seconds, and often using the wall for stability can give us more of a sense of ease within the pose when we are working with timings. Place the belt just above the elbow creases, and then we're gonna use the brick, the full length of the brick between the inner hands. Bring the brick close to the wall, press the forearms down and roll the thumb side of the wrist down into the floor. As you're ready, lift the hips up, shoulders vertically top the elbows, prepare to kick up. Let's use our breath. Inhale and exhale. Go up, find the wall, press the heels to the wall, land the buttocks forward away from the wall. Now again, let's come to the base, press the forearms down, roll the inner wrist, the thumb side of the wrist down into the floor. And as you drive the forearms down, lift away from the floor, draw the chest away from the floor, lift the hips up, press the middle buttocks forward, tailbone up, internally rotate your thighs, squeeze the ankle bones in. And we get steady here. Steady your breath. And as you're ready, slowly come down. Rest in Adha Mukha Virasana. You can remove your belt. Rest your forehead down, relax your shoulders. As you're ready, let's move on to Salamba Shrasasana, the headstand. And uh, I've created a little bit of extra padding for my head. I, I use a, another sticky mat for extra padding underneath my head. Remember, there are tutorials on my channel about these inverted postures. If you need the wall, go to the wall. Use the wall for stability. And if you can free balance, then of course, in the middle of the room. I'll be working with timing of five minutes, but if you need to come down earlier, then that's fine. Set the elbows shoulder width apart, fingers interlocked all the way to the webbing and press the little fingers side of the wrist down into the floor. The thumb side of the wrist, I'm going to call this the inner wrist, roll that in towards the head side. You can place the crown down before you even lift the knees off the floor. Drive the forearms down enough that you can lift the shoulder blades up. Shoulder blades up away from the neck. Then lift the knees off the floor, walk in, and then we can take the legs up. Whether you take the legs up one at a time or together, knees bent, knees straight, eventually we find our way into Shusasana. And take a moment to establish yourself here. So yes, the crown of the head is on the floor, but the forearms pressing down, 
so that the shoulder blades can lift away from the head. The middle forearms pressing down enough that the elbows and the wrists also feel as if they're pressing down. Then as the shoulder blades lift up the back, contain the lower front ribs as you broaden the lower back ribs. And we want to feel the action in the legs is like Tadasana. So we press the thighs back and press the buttocks forward. So the middle buttocks press forward to direct the tailbone up. But just watch, sometimes when we do press the buttocks forward, it can cause the thighs to want to externally rotate. So internally rotate your thighs enough that the ankle bones and the big toe bones come to touch. If it's difficult for you to bring the inner feet in contact, Bend the knees just enough that you can squeeze the inner ankle bones to contact each other, the big toe bones and the knuckles of the big toes. Then peel the outer feet back down towards the outer hips as you slowly straighten the knees again. So a slight internal rotation of the thighs, the outer hips drawing in as the outer feet peel down towards the floor. Knuckle of the big toe, lifting up away from the groins and the inner heels, lifting up away from the groins. All the while, we're steady in our breath, keeping the eyes fixed on one point, softening our gaze, facial muscles soft, the breath smooth and steady. As we challenge ourselves with timings, with holding poses, it's not about our physical prowess and developing our ego. It's much more about the practice of Svadhyaya, which is self-study, an inquiry into the patterns, the habits, the tendencies that we have, and witnessing our mind as we endeavour to hold and stay. And again, we keep coming back to the breath. So that we can get steady within. We're going to slowly make our way down. Keep driving the forearms down, lifting the shoulder blades up as you lower the legs, whether you lower them together, straight or bent, or bring one leg down at a time. Come down all the way. Rest in Adho Virasana. Keep your arms forward so that there's space for your heart as you rest. Relax your shoulders your upper arms, your neck.
as you're ready then come to sitting we'll come back to our downward facing dog pose to help relieve the neck and the thoracic spine if there's any feeling of compaction there so let's stretch forward in Adho Mukha Virasana inhale shoulders forward exhale lift up your hips straighten the arms and the legs and as you're feeding the arms and the hands down into the floor get the feeling that the torso is rebounding up away from the floor let the head drape down sometimes it's helpful to just move the head in a nodding direction or a, a, in the action as if you're saying yes to make sure that there's a looseness there and likewise turn the head the other way as if you're saying no just again to bring in a feeling of looseness and letting go in the neck base of the skull descends then walk your feet forward for Uttanasana if you feel stiff you can put bricks underneath your hands otherwise let's take the hands out wide on either sides of the mat fold down and again feel that the neck is free so once more if you feel that it's helpful you can gently move the head from side to side front to back just to get that feeling of loosening and relaxing the neck muscles and the base of the skull the legs are staying strong kneecaps gripped shoulder blades lifting up away from the neck then as you're ready you can raise the head up hands to the waist inhale and stand all the way up we're going to move on to Salamba Savangasana, the shoulder stand pose and um, you'll see I've got a height here for my shoulders again I've got another tutorial on shoulder stand in my um, channel so look down at the description box below for that video I like to overlap a blanket here so that I've got some padding there for the head and my hair doesn't stick on the sticky mat I'm going to also use a belt around the elbows the shoulder width belt just as I had for my handstand but this time when I'm upside down the belt will be going behind the back above the elbows and once more we're going to see can we hold this pose for five minutes we'll also do halasana plow pose and hold that for one or two minutes it can be of benefit if we've got significant height underneath our shoulders which I do it can be really helpful to have a bolster or uh, perhaps a couple of bricks here for the back of the pelvis to be on when you set yourself up with your shoulders on your support and the head off your support also when we come back down out of the pose this is a good place for the hips to land let's get our belt ready around one elbow hold on to the other end of the belt so you know where it is when you kick your legs up and over let's go over to halasana we'll hold halasana first so place your belt around the other arm and roll the shoulders underneath you stand on the tops of your shoulders and start with the arms stretching out behind you turn the palms up if you do have a bolster here you can hit the wrists against the bolster or the hands against the bolster press the head of the thighs up away from the chest so that you're creating length in the front body so the shoulders have drawn under the chest is broad the front body is long as the head of the thighs press up open the back of the knees so you're pressing the thigh bones up to open the back of the knees and keeping your hips vertically top the shoulders then as you're ready you can bend the elbows and bring your hands onto your back use the hands to stretch the skin on the back up and to move the back ribs in go on pressing the head of the thighs up and uniting the inner feet ankle bones big toe bones in contact and you'll feel the squeeze on the throat 
the breastbone drawing towards the chin, the chin drawing towards the breastbone. Relax the throat there. As you relax the throat, also relax your eyes, the muscles, the skin around your eyes. And let's go up to shoulder stand, whether you take both legs up together or one leg up at a time. Again, readjust the hands if need be. If they've moved along your back towards the hip side, take them back down towards your shoulder blades. Lift the back ribs up, stretch the skin on the back body up. The heels of the hands pressing into the back. And once more, the action in the legs is like Tadasana. Press the thighs back, buttocks forward. And as you press the middle buttocks forward, draw your tailbone up. But note that sometimes if you excessively press the buttocks forward, sometimes those inner thighs start to roll out. So we've got to internally rotate the legs to keep those inner feet in contact. If it's difficult, as I said in Shusasana, you can bend the knees a little to then work the inner ankles together, work the knuckles of the big toes together, squeeze them in towards each other, see if you can maintain contact as you then go back to straightening the legs. So the outer ankle bones squeezing in towards the inner ankle bones, bring the inner ankle bones in contact. The inner heels stretching up away from the groins. The knuckles of the big toes pressing up away from the groins. And the knuckles of the little toes peeling down towards the outer hips, compacting the outer hips. So maintaining action in the legs, a vertical lift, ankles vertically top the hips, hips vertically top the shoulders, and we're balanced, we're steady. Then to help with the steadying of the mind, work with your breath, consciously slow and steady the breath. All the while, keep the facial muscles soft, throat relaxed, tongue and the mouth soft.
Now we'll slowly make our way down, whether you take one leg at a time or you bring both legs down together. Find the floor, remove your belt, and then to come down, have the arms behind you so you can support your descent. Slowly roll the spine back down. And as we come to rest, slip your shoulders off your height so that the head and shoulders rest on the lower level. And whether you're happy enough to let the legs extend out straight to rest or it's your preference to keep the knees bent. You can transition into Shavasana from here, find a comfortable position. But as I'm finishing up, I'm going to roll off to the side and come up to sit. That's it for today. Thanks for joining me. For more in-depth teaching, check out the video library on my website, heatherkitchenyoga.com.au. The link is in the description box below.